everybody, it's Neil Gardner here once again with another audiobook blast straight at you. There, 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 let's get closer. Ah, there it goes. Hello, we're, we're here in association with the lovely fine folk at the Audiobook Creators Alliance, the ACA. It's completely free to join and it's for creative people in the audiobook industry here in the UK. So if you're on the creative side, if you're uh, an author, maybe, we don't have any authors yet, join up. Uh, but also if you're a narrator, an editor, a proofer, hi proofers, hi editors, if you're a producer or an engineer, sound designer, cover designer, uh, really anybody who works on the creative side and doesn't like pay out the money, uh, come join us and be part of it. We'd love to have you there and uh, add your voice to our voices and make one giant voice which could take over the world or something like that. I think we might be more about cakes and parties, but anyway, join up and say hi. It's completely free. So what's today's topic about? Uh, today's topic is about kind of technical specifications. Now, every client is going to have a potentially different tech spec. So whenever you start working for a new client, make sure you get their technical spec from them. But this is something you need to know, uh, particularly uh, as an editor and someone who does the mastering and delivery, but also studios need to know this, producers, even narrators, home narrators, all of you need to know. So for example, the majority of tech spec in the UK is based around the Audible standard because nearly everything is going to be sold on Audible. So you might as, well, might as well make everything to the Audible standard. So for example, Audible standard is going to be mono WAV files at 44.1 kilohertz, 16 bit. Okay, so why is this important? Well, because in the studio, you need to make sure that you've set your Pro Tools, your Reaper, your Adobe Audition, whatever you're using, your DAW, um, at 44.1 16-bit mono. There's no point wasting disk space by having stereo files because you're a single voice doing a single voice thing. Uh, so bear that in mind. It's also useful to not then send your editor something at 48, 32-bit, who then has to then transfer everything backwards and forwards and just waste a bit of time in conversion. It's not a particular problem nowadays. It's quite quick and simple, uh, but it's a step that you don't need to do. And maybe, maybe you might miss it, and suddenly you're delivering something, your final master files uh, are at, uh, say, 48, 32-bit. Ooh troublesome. So just think about that. Have a look at the tech spec. As I say, the kind of standard is 44.1 kilohertz, 16-bit mono WAV files. Now, there are going to be some clients that may want stereo. There's going to be some that may need MP3s. For example, when you're uploading to ACX, they will often uh, have in their tech spec um, that they want the master files as MP3s encoded at 192 kilohertz. Uh, obviously, they're going to be mono if it's a mono single voice recording. But of course, you might be doing something multi-voice or something with music, say on the first file and the last file, maybe a bit of intro and outro music. Um, that's going to be stereo, unless you do mono music. But let's say it's going to be stereo, then all your files afterwards need to be stereo as well. So all the files in uh, a delivered product, particularly to Audible, need to be either all mono or all stereo. So bear that one in mind. Um, but yeah, so for ACX, it could need uh, uh, some MP3s mastered. Uh, and also look at the way file naming has to be done. Some clients need ISBN numbers built into the file names. Some need chapter numbers built at the end of the file names. There's a whole panoply, a plethora, a pantheon, shall we say, of uh, specifics that you need to check. So check with your client, make sure everyone in your production line knows what those requirements are, uh, particularly important with file naming, I can tell you. Uh, bear in mind, for example, really big rule, that no file can be longer than two hours long for Audible. So if you have a chapter that goes on for say four hours, I've had one of these recently, oh, it just never ended. You need to chop it up. So once it goes over two hours, you need to split it to two roughly equal length file. So you maybe do it around one hour each. If it was three hours long, you do them around one and a half hours each. Wherever the nearest, normally there's a, a chapter, uh, a paragraph break, for example, to, to put an edit in. So that's something you need to make sure you do. Um, but so there's all these rules. If ever in doubt, get in touch with the ACA, get in touch with me, get in touch with any of the gang, speak out, ask questions, and we'll make sure you get it right because it's really important because this audiobook thing, it's an art form, and uh, all art form works best when the frame around it looks fabulous too. Uh, unless it's a Banksy, in which case anything goes. So that's it. That's another audiobook blast. I hope I'll see you very, very soon. See ya. Mm -hmm.